And so we're going to make a quick jump uh, to another planet. We're going to look at Mars because we're seeing mega flood features on Mars that have a lot of parallels to what we're going to be looking at. And we're seeing the erosive and depositional effects of massive mega floods on Mars that have created the same type, uh, the same suite of geomorph geomorphic features that we're seeing associated with mega floods on Earth. So as it says here, now, now check this out. Notice the streamlining and, and notice these aerodynamic forms. And here you can very clearly see that water is involved here. As it says, the blue arrows show the direction of water flow. So you've got a major flow coming through this way. You've got water flows coming down this way. Streamlined islands are point, have the orange arrows pointed to them. So look at this. Here you have a streamlined erosional residual right here. You see that guy? Elongated yes, into sir. this aerodynamic shape. You have scablands, cataracts, and grooves carved into the channel floors are similar to features found on Earth where large floods have occurred, such as the channel scabland of eastern Washington state. But these are streamlined forms. Look at this, this thing right here. What is it like? Isn't this like the perfect shape of a canoe almost? Because what is happening is, you know, when we design canoes and boats or watercraft of any kind, the idea is to reduce friction as much as possible. Now imagine that you've got a watercraft that's square or rectangular. That would not that would be unnatural, wouldn't it? That, that wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't navigate too well in a, in a square-bottomed boat if you're in a current, you know. The idea is, and imagine you've got a blockage in, in the water and it's rectilinear. It's facing up into this water. The water's flowing. Let's say it's composed of an erodible material, like whatever. It could be anything from soft to relatively hard, like sandstone, let's say. Well, as that water is rushing by it, what, of course, it's doing is it's concentrating its erosive force on those corners. The corners will be the first to go. Those corners are going to start getting rounded off. And as the water continues to flow, those corners will get more and more rounded, and eventually it'll form almost a parabolic profile looking upstream. Because what, what it's trying to do is that the water is trying to reduce the frictional resistance of the obstacle to a minimum, right? And so conversely, when you're designing a boat hull, you want the friction of the boat hull moving through the water to be a minimum. So you get this fluviodynamic or aerodynamic shape. So it is these shapes, these aerodynamic shapes that we're looking for in the landscape that are going to be indicators of a, a pluvial, I mean, a fluvial event. So part of this vocabulary we're learning is the SERs, the Streamlined Erosional Residuals, Kyle. Um, but here we see some beautiful examples of streamlined erosional residuals. But these, of course, are on Mars. And we go through here, and here we see the bifurcation, because typically, uh, once you have a main channel that captures the main stream flow, you don't get meandering anymore, especially if it's a bedrock channel. Right, but when you have a big channel, see, with a wide flat floor, and 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 this is very typical of the the geomorphic profile of a of a uh, a mega flood produced uh, spillway or channel is if you'll have a flat floor, and the flat floor is because the water that was running through there is laden with sediment. So when the water begins to slow down, you know, the water will drain off and you will get these successively more concentrated basal deposits. And then eventually the whole bottom of the, of the spillway or the, the, the coulee, whatever the channel is going to be basically flat. Now you'll have the, the modern rivers will occupy those channels, right? Because sure, you've got a river flowing on the uplands, right? And it's going to, it's going to be flowing around. But as soon as it hits that channel, and if that channel is 200, 300 feet lower than the uplands, boom, as soon as the river hits that channel and flows in, now it's captured, you see, and that's where it's going to continue to flow. So when the flow goes, it's going to meander and it's going to be shift constantly shifting and it's going to bifurcate, it's going to come back together, it's going to split again, and it's going to create islands, it's going to create these streamlined forms, just like you see here. Here you see multiple bifurcations. Something else I want to start calling people's attention to is this very subtle striations that run longitudinally. That is running 
uh, parallel to the cre- to the stream flow, parallel to the to the to the direction of the channel. Typically, that is going to be because in these channels you might have water flowing, and there will be sediment. Let's say there's rocks in there, but the 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 the, the power of the flowing water is just not quite capable of elevating and and the 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 this um the sediment and so what happens is that the sediment is moving along the bottom right so as as the water is flowing it's moving in some cases the the sediment may be rolling and tumbling in other cases it may actually not even be rotating it might just be being pushed along the bottom of of the water flow well in either case once the flood is over that leaves a very distinct morphology on the bottom of the channel, which is this longitudinal erosion, this longitudinal, it might be like uh, ridges with swales. It's a very subtle ridges. We'll see many examples of that. Let me, uh, as we go here, down here, you see that bifurcating where the water is splitting and then coming back together. Look Those at are this. all really well preserved too. Oh, well, yeah. You know, how, yep. how know, old no or recent hearing. can they be? They've got huge wind storms. They've got Move, moving debris around, it, it can't be a billion years old. Well, one of the things that could possibly be used to at least relative dating is is the cratering. For example, if you look at this, clearly, like if you look at this crater, this crater had to have been formed after the flood uh-huh. because you're going to see that in some of these images, let's see, uh, let's see, okay, yeah, here, Look at this crater. Oh, I've got that one. Oh, man, I've got a poster of that in my rack here. This, yeah, this is an awesome one. Now, notice here the crater existed before the flood because the flood has created this tapered streamlined form down current. So in this case, notice that the, the flow would have been from the lower right to the upper left. Also, something I want to call your attention to is this, are these striations within within the floor of the, of the Paleo Channel? Because we're going to see... That's going to be a common feature that we see in uh, mega flood features on Earth. That, again, a lot of these features are going to be subtle. Some of them are more spectacular. They run the gamut. But we're going to learn to uh, recognize the subtle features as well as the spectacular ones. Same thing again. So these are the kinds of forms that, yeah, look up here. See the streamlining? Look at this thing. It almost, think about, look at a fish. A fish, you know, Evolution has created fish to be aerodynamic because they're wanting to move through the water with minimum friction, right? So, so it's the same same principle. Look at this, and and again, notice the the striations down here that you see these what we call longitudinal striations that run more or less parallel to the current. Man, what's all the pock marking down in the lower left on that one? That's well, that's wild. hummocky terrain. Now, yeah. okay, there's several explanations there. For one thing, that pock marking picture that a mega flood comes rushing through and starts ripping up the bedrock. Okay, now you got all this stuff jumbled in, yeah. flowing. Now, the water again, because notice here what you've got is that same notice here you've got a constricted flow and then it opens up, right? Yeah. So there's a sheet flood there. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, subsequent floods will come in and mantle that rough, hewn, coarse, bouldery deposits with more sediment. And I think that's yeah. probably what we're looking at right here. Hmm. So we're looking at this tremendous mega scale outwash debris, and then it's been partially buried under subsequent floods that have mantled it with a finer, finer material. Look at how many circles there are at the heads of those little striation. That's so crazy. Those little, uh, there's little craters at the fronts of the striation marks. Yeah. And yeah. If, if there's an obstacle in the flow, yeah, the flow can create this tail. Yes. An elongated tail behind the obstacle. Uh, yeah, I, I hadn't noticed those little tiny little craters. And they're, God, there are probably hundreds of those. Yeah, oh, it looks yeah. like there's hundreds and hundreds of them, yeah. Here we go. Check this out. You see how the striations in the floor of the channel are following the channel. And that is, I would attribute that to coarse sediment essentially being washed along the bottom. Uh, but then look at this. Here you've got the 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 this meander pattern. You've got it, it's doing this, see? So that was probably the final because 
the water starts, comes in, and then it declines, and then there's going to be the final gasp of the floods, the residual flows, and they're going to leave the final subtle imprint right on the surface. They're going to be very surficial, but that will be the last thing that happens hydrologically to the landscape. Beautiful streamlined erosional residual. Now check this out. This is relative dating. We can look at this flood flow that came through here. Which is younger, the flow that cut this channel here or that crater? Which is younger? And the crater is younger. Uh, it has to be, doesn't it? Yeah, because the rim is in the, in the channel. So if you had a date on that crater, you would know that the flood that created this channel was older than the crater. It's also Yeah, now there's one up on the other side of it, straight up, that looks maybe older. Yeah, there's no rim in the channel. Right, it looks like it's been eroded. Yeah. Like this could be a remnant crater that was already there. Yeah. When the flood came through, this was afterwards. It's also interesting that a lot of these channels have no tributary canyons or any apparent uh, water erosion on the on the cliff edges. So right. the, and that, whatever flood made yeah. this. And that's that evidence it. right there that this was a like a singular event. Yeah. It happened. This water came from somewhere. It did its geomorphic work. It stopped. And now you've mm -hmm. had a, 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 a relict or fossilized landscape. Right. For the no most. more water worked on it. Yeah, it's, that's wild. It is. Yeah, check this one out. Here's your uh, streamlined islands. And uh, pretty fantastic stuff, isn't it? And here yeah, you can see the other, the other thing I would note is that impacts obviously don't happen very often <laughs> in any of these photos. <laughs> yeah, there's just yeah, but everywhere. like you'll notice that this impact would have been post flood. Yes. And these are probably relics of craters that were pre flood that have been right. eroded and buried. Man. Yeah, check this out. So here, the shell batana. Volus, near where it flows into Christ uh, Planitia, right here. So this little red box is this picture here. Flow towards the upper part of the screen. Notice here you've got this. The, we, this is called longitudinal scouring because it's a long. It's the long. It's long, right? Think long longitude, and it's it tends to be just like longitude on Earth. Um, you know, your lines of longitude, your meridians all kind of run parallel. So you've got that longitudinal scouring here, which is water flowing through, probably dragging larger sediment along the flow of the bottom of the current flow, because some sediment will be small enough that it's picked up and entrained within the water flow, but there may be sediment also that is not being lifted in the flow itself, but the, the force of the flow is still enough to push it along the bottom of the channel. And notice the cool streamlined forms. You've got a little streamlined form juxtaposed on a long streamlined form. Now, clearly, when you look at this, the crater was already there, wasn't it? Yeah, it's made, like the cause of those streamlined forms. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it looks like there might be another one at the tip of the of the big one down there too, more uh, eroded. Yeah, down here. Yes. Yeah. Yep.